Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our congregation in Castle Hill. Um, those who, especially those who have come to see the, the baptism of Leila B.J. Kuma. My name is Moses Han, minister of this church. I hope you all enjoy the service and the fellowship morning to be afterwards. Next Sunday will be a carol service. You know, usually we, we hold it on Christmas Eve, but since Christmas Day is happened to be on, on Saturday, and so next day is a Sunday, the session has decided to hold a carol service on Sunday morning next week uh, to avoid services on, on three days in a row. So next Sunday, bring friends, Invite your family members and let's celebrate the birth of Christ together. I think today is Jennifer's birthday. Happy birthday, Jennifer. Let me commence the service uh, with this reading from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, who is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being. Let's bow in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly King, yet born of Mary, Jesus Christ, Son of God, we praise and worship you. Eternal Word, yet child without speech, Jesus Christ, Son of God, we praise and worship you. Robed in glory, yet wrapped in infant's clothes, Jesus Christ, Son of God, we praise and worship you. Lord of heaven and earth, yet laid in a manger, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we praise and worship you. We thank you for being our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. This Christmas season, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness. As you sent your messengers, the prophets, to prepare the way of salvation, so prepare our souls to meet you and help us to pursue those things that will nurture faith in you. Make us conscious of your presence with us now as we celebrate the coming of your great salvation. In Jesus' name we ask, Amen. Let's join our first song this morning, Son of God. Oh 
time for the baptism of Leila Vijay Kuma. So many young parents these days who ask ministers to baptize their children. They do not come back to church after the baptism. Or they come back to church after they got second or third one. When they do this, they prove themselves to be liars because at each baptism they are required to say I do when asked do you promise to be regular and diligent members of the church so when they say I do to this question and then they don't keep it they lie to the church they lie to the minister they lie to God Nadine, Leila's mother, has kept a vow faithfully as a regular and diligent member of the church in the last several years. So I respect that. I really appreciate that. The Word of God teaches us that baptism is a sign and seal of the covenant of grace. God's promise to forgive our sins and renew us by the Spirit, as the Apostle Peter claimed in Acts chapter 2. At the moment of baptism, Leila is admitted into the Church of Jesus Christ and is committed to serve Christ as Lord. With this practice, Leila becomes a member of this faith community. She will have a privilege to have a fellowship with God's people and grow in the knowledge of God. But it is Leila who needs to personally respond to the good news of Jesus Christ as she grows. Only through a personal faith in Christ and by the grace of God, she will be saved. Baptism doesn't have any magical power to save her. I don't have any spiritual authority to make her a Christian either. What this baptism signifies is that we, as the members of the church, together with her parents, Nadine and Harry, have responsibilities to educate and raise Leila with God's word and in God's way. Since this practice of baptism rests on God's covenant of grace with the believers and their children, it requires personal faith in Jesus Christ on the part of the parent. Therefore, it is necessary for those presenting their children for baptism to answer certain questions. So, Hari and Nadine, please stand. Yes. <laughs> Nadine and Harry, who is your Lord and Savior? Nadine and Harry, do you truly believe Jesus is the only way for your salvation? Do you promise to obey him and follow his way? Our Lord Jesus has commanded us to teach those whom we baptize in his name. We promise to teach and educate Leila from the Bible, the Word of God, how to trust in Christ as a personal Savior and to follow him as a Lord. We promise to pray for Leila and to set up a godly example in your actions that by God's grace, Leila may become a faithful follower of our Lord Jesus Christ all her day. <laughs> As part of your godly example, do you promise to be regular and diligent members of the Church of Jesus Christ? Yes, Leila, thank you. <laughs> Those who are present here have heard your answers, and we are all witnesses of this. The Lord bless you and your child, Layla, and graciously enable you to keep these promises. 
Uh, now, the, the members of this congregation, please stand. I'm going to ask you a question. The, not members, you, you, may, you, may, you may sit there. Just members of this church. Just members of this congregation. I'll ask you a question, and uh, if you accept this responsibility, you, you will say, I will. This is the question. This practice of baptism lays special responsibilities upon you, the people of God. Will you be faithful to your calling as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, so that by God's grace, this child, Leila, may grow up in the knowledge and the love of Christ? Please be seated. Time for baptism. So, Davin and Harry, you may just step up. Hello. <laughs> She's a bit nervous. <laughs> Leila, I baptize you in the name of the Father. <laughs> and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Blessing of the Almighty God, Father, and Son. Dwell <coughs> in your heart and let it stand upon you forever and ever. I bless you. <laughs> From now on, we receive Leila Vijay Kuma into the care of the Church of Jesus Christ, that as a member of the Covenant community, she may be nurtured and strengthened and continue as Christ's faithful servant to our life's end. <laughs> now, May Mills, uh, who is responsible for our cradle role, will present a special gift to Leila. Um, can I have a microphone? No? It's all right. Yeah, you can use this one. Good morning, Harry and Dean. We wait so long for this very special day. It's our own behalf of the lady of the Queen Anne and Wales. We ask you to accept this as a gift for Layla to mark this very special occasion. So on behalf of the ladies, in fact, everyone here today, we wish Lena the very warmest welcome into our church here at St. Columbus. May God continue to bless you and protect you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and on behalf of the session of this congregation, Session Club Permanent Packing will give a baptism certificate to the parents. Kuma and her parents. Here and now, 
we commit this little child into your hands, trusting in your grace and favor. Send your Holy Spirit upon her and dwell in her forever. Enrich her in every way with your heavenly grace. Cause her to grow in wisdom and in stature, in favor with you and man. In your great mercy and grace, bring her through the dangers of childhood, deliver her from the temptations of youth, and lead her to witness a good confession and to persevere in it to the end. Bless this own father. Guide these parents as they seek to discharge the sacred trust and responsibilities that has been given to them. Give to them the assurance of your unfailing care, protection, and provision. May their home be filled with the love and laughter, peace and happiness, as they look to you and trust in you for all things. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you. Good job, Leila. You're one of the best. Let's begin worship with We Cross the Line.
this month, Christmas Day, there is a retiring offering, offering to Presser Aid. Uh, as Moses mentioned, the carol service is on next Sunday, normal time. After today's service, there is morning tea in the hall. Uh, annual reports need to be into Herman Hattie uh, by the end of January. This Wednesday night, there is a committee of management meeting on at 7.30 in the small hall. Also, the small hall just here has been opened up for any of the children who would like to go in there at the moment if they'd like to. Please join me with a uh, prayer of thanksgiving and intercession. Loving, gracious Father, we thank you for this day, for the basic things in life, for the recent rain, for the reprieve from the bushfires we usually experience at this time of the year. We thank you, Father, for always being with us, for the hope we find in Jesus, that through the tough, toughest of times we lean on you. We thank you that you are our strength and our refuge. Help us to put you first in our lives. We pray for our pastor Moses and his family. We ask you to continue to guide them and walk with them. Be with Moses in his work and help him in hard times and through the tough jobs that he's signed to do. We ask that you give him rest when he is needed. We thank you for your patience with us in our failings. For friends and family who are with us through the good times and the bad. For those closest to us who support us in the times of need. As this world we live in is in turmoil and out of control, when times feel so overwhelming and we feel so helpless. Help us never to lose faith. Guide us and help us so we ask. Help us with the things that challenge us and cause us to stumble. Help us not to give up into the lies and the seed of evil one puts before us. When we fail and fall short of your glory, be with us and strengthen us. And help us to change. Help us never to lose sight of the finish line that's been set before us, but focus on you. Although we do not know what tomorrow will bring, or even if we'll be here next week, we thank you for the only thing in our lives that is secure, the security and the promise in our lives that our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. That can never ever change. The promise of eternal life in a place of love and no pain or suffering. Help us to reach out to those around us and share the gospel. We pray for those whom we love who do not know you. We ask that you would open their hearts, they would not fall into the trap that the devil, that the devil has set for us. Help them not to blindly follow the worldly ways that leads to destruction, to eternal hell. Help them to understand why they can never find a full contentment in their lives, why only a life in Jesus can be fulfilled. Jesus, we thank you that you understand pain and heartache we go through in our own lives. For when you walked on earth, you experienced the same, <clears throat> the same heartache and pain as we do. And when you were nailed to the cross, you suffered Father's wrath for us. You suffered so much more than we could endure. We thank you for what you've done for us. We thank you for your saving grace. We thank you, Father, for this day when we come together to celebrate the baptism of Layla Vijay Puma. We pray for the parents and the Dean and Harry and the sisters. We pray that you'll bless them and care for them and watch over them and guide them. We also pray for their family and friends who have come along today. We pray that you challenge us to ask and wonder why. Why are we really here? Not just in this church building, but why are we on this earth? What is life really about? Why does life never really make sense? Are we here for another reason? Father, we pray for those who we know are not well at this time, for those who are struggling both mentally and physically. We ask that they may sense your healing and peace upon them. We pray for our Prime Minister and leaders and the decisions they make. We pray for the persecuted church. We ask you to guide them and strengthen them. We pray for the great comforter, the Holy Spirit, is upon them. We ask that you humble those who seek to destroy you, and may their hearts be touched by your love. We pray for your church in Auburn. We pray for your love 
a direction upon them. We ask that you will strengthen and watch over them. We also pray for Liz McLean and the Elwood Children's Hospital and pray for when they do talks in January with the MPs, we ask that you be with them and guide them. We thank you that you hear our prayers, that you've overcome this world. We give you praise and thanks for you alone and worthy. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. There are 10,000 reasons for us to sing, so let's do that now. Let's sing 10,000 reasons. Not all 10,000 now. Let's say something like that.
reading today is from Isaiah 9, 1 to 7. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea along the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You will enlarge the nation and increase their joy. They rejoice before you as children rejoice at the harvest. Or people rejoice at the harvest. As men rejoice. When dividing the plunder, or as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them. The bar across their shoulders, the rod of the oppressor, every warrior's boot used in battle, every garment robed in blood, will be destined for burning, will be fueled for the fire. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. For, for that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accompany, accomplish the expansion of God. Almost 3,000 years ago, the prophet Isaiah said this, To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Even if you are not church goers, you may be familiar with this part of the Bible because it's all over during the Christmas season. Especially that wording, uh, everlasting Father. But this is what we are going to think about this morning. This is really interesting. Uh, of all the titles given to Jesus Christ, this one probably raises the most questions. After all, how can a child be a father? And how can a newborn be so old as to be called everlasting? And of course, isn't Jesus the Son of God? Why is he called Father here? Everlasting Father. What did God have in mind when he gave this title to Jesus Christ? What did he want us to imagine when he announced this? 700 years before Jesus was born in Bethlehem. What difference does it make to me and to you? Is it relevant at all? Yes, very much. Here's my best understanding. When Isaiah wrote this prophecy almost 3,000 years ago, people in Israel were living in shaky times. They were surrounded by huge and powerful kingdoms, especially Assyria. So they needed, firstly, something they could cling to. And people in shaky times also want someone they can depend on. Someone like a fatherly figure. So God promised them both in his son. He said first, 
the one whose coming is everlasting. In other words, he's eternal. He's always existed and always will. Religious leaders in Jesus' days questioned him on a number of occasions. They questioned his authority, they questioned his origin, his motives. It was a fairly an ugly conversation. So finally, Jesus tried to lighten up the conversation by saying, Hey guys, listen, listen, just be happy that I am here with you now. He said, after all, your father, your forefather Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. Do you understand what is going on here? Abraham lived probably um, 4,000, 5,000 years before uh, 4,000, 5,000 years before and, and uh, that's about 1,000, uh, 22,000 years before Jesus was, was talking about this. I knew all about Abraham, in fact. I knew him, he said. But these guys picked the right up on and then they say, hold on, you are not yet 50 years old. And you have seen Abraham? Jesus answered, Before Abraham was born, I am. To understand this powerful statement, you've got to know that I am is the name that God used to reveal himself to Moses and the Israelites. It's an amazing and yet fitting title for God because God exists fully everywhere at all times. He always has and always will be and is today full existence. He didn't have a beginning so he won't have the end. He is always there. Nobody made him, created him. That's why God's name is I am. So in this statement, when Jesus says, I'm not only older than Abraham, I have existed forever because I am God. That's what he was saying. I'm not only the Son of God, I am God. And he was nearly killed for that statement. When he said, he is I am, there are three options to understand this. First, he was mad. Second, he was lying. Third, he is God. Jesus is eternal. Jesus has always existed and always will exist. Do you believe that? The second part of the name we are looking at is Father. God's son was born a child of man. We all know that. But look what happened when Jesus grew up. He cared for people, like Father does. He nurtured sick people back to health, like a father does. He prayed for people, like a father does. He was there for people. He was strong and dependable, like a good father. I think many of you have seen the movie Taken. Liam Neeson movie. And that movie, Liam Neeson was an ex-cop, ex-special agent. His adult daughter was kidnapped while traveling in Europe. And this man, her father, did just everything possible to rescue his kidnapped daughter. At all costs. And 
and he was successful. That's what father is to do. If anything bad happens to your kid, you will do everything possible. Jesus said in Luke's Gospel 15, Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't it leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? That's what fathers would do, isn't it? Fathers, if they have to be anything in the lives of their children or to do certain things and hold certain places in their lives, Fathers ought to be firm but loving, which is how Jesus handled people. Leila, do you want to cry on the ground? Give me just a little bit. <laughs> Let me tell you two stories that illustrate the fatherliness of Jesus. One day, as Jesus was traveling up to Jerusalem, and he looked up over the city laid out in front of him, full of people who would not only reject him as their savior, but would kill him on the cross. Jesus said, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and the stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you're not willing. You are going to kill me. I love you, but you are going to kill me. Can't you just hear the longings of a parent in those words? Oh, Herman. Oh, Tano. Oh, Harry, you have no idea how much I care for you. How often I have wanted just to scoop you up and uh, wrap my arms around you. You may hate me, you may not understand me, but this is what I am. I am your father. I love you. Another time, Jesus got word that a close friend of his was near death. He headed to his friend's house, but before he got there, his friend died. The friend's sister, Mary, ran out of the house all the way down the street, collapsed at Jesus' feet in a sobbing heap. Let me read you what happened. She fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Then Jesus wept. The shortest verse in the whole Bible, but probably the most powerful. Jesus, the Son of God, the eternal God, wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. Very fatherly, did you say? Our Lord and Savior is tender. He is parental. He is fatherly towards his children and he always will be. Brothers and sisters, I want you to imagine yourself today. Handing Jesus all the stuff that's been troubling you. It could be relational problem. It could be job situation. It could be health issues. Imagine him right now wrapping his 
fatherly arms around you and say, don't you worry, I love you. Maybe you can even let your shoulders heave a few sighs of relief. Friends, Jesus is not just a newly born Savior. He is the everlasting Father. Don't ever forget the truth, especially during this season. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus. He's not only a newly born Savior, but he's the everlasting Father who keeps us, who cares for us, who loves us and protects us forever. Help us, help everyone in this building Learn this truth and never forget the truth by relying on Him and depending on Him as their personal Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.
morning. Please join us in the hall for morning tea, and if you wish, you can uh, put your retiring offerings in the plates at the door. Hopefully, you see for morning tea.